Hi, everyone, and welcome to FT Insights. I'm Mike Fivas. We've got another interview today in our series about the blurring line between health, wellness, and fitness and wearable technology. You know, healthcare practitioners are really getting fed up with the data that patients bring them from their fitness trackers and smartwatches. They don't want to look at data from anything that's not up to regulatory standards. So I'm happy to have with me today Wakas Al Siddiq. He's founder and CEO of Biotricity. His startup has hardware and software for heart monitoring that's now going through the approval process. Hi, Wakas, and welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. So, Wakas, catch us up. I know you've got hardware and software that's making its way through the FDA. Where are you? Yeah, so the software we got cleared uh, uh, last year, uh, we did in record time for a class two device, and I think it was about 24 calendar days. Uh, the second one we submitted, uh, you know, late Q1, and we expect uh, a response from FDA any day now. Uh, the confidence for us in the company side is very high, mainly because on the hardware side, it's really around, you know, are we compliant from a biocompatibility and electrical standard uh, specification? And that is typically done by an independent lab. So we've actually gone through the lab testing, we've gone through the regulatory process, and all of that has come out. Uh, we've gotten our clearances for that and uh, our reports saying that we've approved and, and we've passed all of them and met, meet those needs. We've also gotten our FCC ID. So one of the big things around, you know, IoT and healthcare and connectivity is really around, you know, what's the emissions? You, you put something near the body, how does it affect you? Um, is the transmission strong enough? Are you going to create bad noise or affect the signal in any way? So we have our FCC ID already, uh, and that's uh, registration uh, for the device. So, you know, that gives us a huge confidence that really it's about FDA picking up the file, checking their boxes, maybe calling up our labs and, and giving us that clearance. Okay, cool. So let's, uh, we should really talk about the device. What is it that you have and what can you do with it? Yeah, so our device is really a, uh, you know, I, I, I like to call it an active or intelligent cardiac monitor. So, you know, you've got passive holders, which are really designed for low risk patients, you put them on the patient, they record, and then you send the patient uh, home, bring him back, take the device off, and then send the data for analysis. And two weeks later, you get a report. And the problem there is that, you know, if you've got a high risk patient, you want longer term monitoring. Uh, you don't want to, you know, two days isn't enough. You, you, it's an intermittent issue. You need to see the, you know, a, a broader view of the picture or a broader view of the patient. But the problem with that is that as soon as you go that way, you're going to go in and introduce the problem of uh, patient risk. What if something happens to this patient? Um, what if they actually have an event? And so, you know, our device, it collects your ECG, but it's actively analyzing it for any anomalies. And when it detects an issue, it transmits this over the cellular network to a call center, and that call center can view that issue and determine whether or not there is an emergency or not, and then deal with the, with the according response. So we're actively engaged in monitoring the patient. We're actively analyzing those issues, and we've got a built-in cellular uh, radio, which actually you know, transmits that information. So, Wakas, you have a device that you can show us? Yeah, absolutely. So if you, uh, if you see this, um, this is our device and you can see how small it is in terms of hand size. Um, it's very thin and it's got a built in um, cellular radio inside of it. So you don't have to deal with the secondary cell phone or any, you know, Bluetooth connection and whatnot. So it's very easy for the patient. It's got an LCD screen. So when the doctor's actually placing the electrodes on the patient, he can see how the placement is. And this is actually a very unique feature because not a lot of devices have this and you know you think it's not a big deal but really the doctor wants to see how he's placing that device to make sure it's placed in the exact uh, right spot um, and then it also sends any alerts to the patient. Actually that is a big deal we've seen a, a few things like that that really make or break because it involves you know the patients actually deploying it and that can be a problem so it looks like you've definitely solved that or, or a at least provided a path to solving it. Exactly. Okay, interesting. So how's the battery life? I mean, do you have to plug it in every day, first thing in the morning, or how's that work? Yeah, so the idea is that, you know, the battery for this device, it should run um, uh, from, from a regulatory standpoint, we have a 48-hour battery life. Um, but when you're in seven to 10 days, you know, we've built it so that there's a quick charge feature. 
you know, you take a break, you're um, taking a shower, you plug it in, it charges up during that time and you can run it. Now, 48 hours, we have assuming there's a certain amount of communication. So we're saying two hours of constant communication, which I would assume if you have two hours of alerts going on, there's probably something wrong with you and you're going to get called in. Um, when we're not communicating as much, we can actually get around five days out of it. So, it, you know, of course, it's different for every patient, but generally the device is designed that you're fine if you charge it once a day because it's 48 hours. Right. Your actual mileage may vary, definitely. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that sounds like it's practically all, all you need from a practical point of view. So that's really good. And there's no, it's, this is very clearly a healthcare device. There's no consumer app that goes with it or anything like that. Exactly. This is a diagnostic device. So it's very much a medical device. We do have in the works of coming up with a simplified version of this device where we get rid of the screen, make it smaller, get rid of the wires, and it becomes a consumer um, oriented device. So just like how a diabetic has a glucometer, our vision is we you know, take a cardiac patient, they've been diagnosed on this device, and now we've got to deal uh, with them on an ongoing basis. How do we enable them? How do we engage them? But yeah, this particular product, you, you said it right. It is designed for the physician. It's really not meant for the consumer to be looking at or interacting with it. It's very much, let me grab the data. Let me make an analysis and a diagnosis, come up with a treatment, uh, you know, a treatment uh, cycle for you, and then in engage the patient into that treatment plan. So what, it, what your device sounds like to me is smaller, cheaper, faster, easier uh, Holter monitor, but also with real-time capabilities. So how should healthcare professionals think about this? Is it an extension of an existing category or, or are you creating a new category here? It's a good question. I think it's, uh, it's really an extension of an existing category. I mean, the active component is certainly a new piece, but I think that because physicians are familiar with, you know, remotely monitoring a patient, you really look at this as moving from passive recording to an active uh, uh, an active monitor that allows, you know, real-time response. So it's, you know, I think of the old cycle of uh, the VHS recorder, then you went to TiVo, and now you're at like Netflix on demand and, and that kind of stuff. So, and, and so really this is like, you know, going from VHS to on demand. That's a, that's a good way to put it. I, I like that. So FDA willing, of course, when, when do you expect to have product on the market? So we are hoping that we have product out in the market towards the summertime this year. Um, so I guess we're, we're, you know, almost in June. So I, I would say that by late summer, you should see us, uh, you know, launching. We've got our manufacturer in place. We're dealing with actually a, a pre-production run right now. Uh, and, uh, you know, just going to hit the ground running and, and actively building out our sales team. So, you know, looking forward to the launch. Now, there's obviously has to be a, a cloud computing p uh, component to this is, Will you be selling that as a subscription or is it just part of, uh, comes with the device? Yeah, so our model is very a subscription-based model or a per-use model. Think of it more like a therapeutic, right? If the, if the physician uses the device, he pays us. If he doesn't use it, he doesn't pay us. Um, and the software and the cloud and all of our analysis and reporting, all of that is tied in uh, together as one complete solution. So when the physician gets it, he gets the device and the cloud and that software and he's really just paying when he uses it. Okay. Now, as I recall, the way you structured the cloud and the software platform is that you're not restricted to just heart monitoring. Is that right? Exactly. And even, even the device internal uh, internals, um, we built a remote patient monitoring platform. So uh, the key piece of the device or the hardware, the, the brain, if you will, is really agnostic to any sensor. Then we've added the cardiac sensor to it and, and built the form factor around that. And the cloud is exactly the same way. We built uh, a, a remote patient monitoring platform and then consumed aspects of our uh, software service and tailored it to the cardiac application. So uh, you are absolutely right. The idea is to leverage that cloud in any subsequent markets that we go after. Okay, I don't wanna to get too far ahead of ourselves, but what, uh, can you share a little bit about what might be next on the horizon? Yeah, absolutely. So I, I can, I, you know, I don't like to give up too much information because you know, we gotta keep that, you know, uh, whole excitement around the launch, um, but we are investigating and researching actively in a couple areas which we think are very exciting. One is prenatal monitoring. So the whole idea around 
um, uh, fetal death and 1.5% uh, of babies that are stillborn. Uh, how do we impact on that? High risk pregnancies, they're monitored inside of a hospital. How do we bring that to the home? So that's an area that we're constantly looking at and researching actively today. Um, we're also looking at COPD um, and, and lung function and, and see how, you know, patients that have lung problems or breathing problems, how can we impact that and, and, and deliver a solution that can be used uh, and leveraged from the home. Uh, and then the third area we're investigating and active on is the sleep apnea space. And the sleep apnea comes from uh, also our expertise in cardiac because sleep apnea, there are people that are having arrhythmias at night and that's actually why they're not sleeping. It's actually a cardiac issue, but it pr uh, presents itself in a different way. So these are some of the areas that we're researching. We're actively engaged with our partners, uh, putting out devices, prototyping stuff. Um, so you'll see something show up from one of those sectors. <clears throat> That's, uh, that sounds like pretty exciting stuff in all three areas. You could do a lot of good. So I know that you are not just about the healthcare segment. You're looking at the consumer segment as well, yes? Absolutely. So the idea for us is that uh, when I say consumer, I, I look at chronic patients, right? Um, yeah. So you know, when people think consumer, they're thinking, you know, lifestyle or just everyone. I'm not looking for the healthy guy. I'm actually looking for the guy who just had a heart attack. I want to, uh, you know, biotricity is about really improving in, uh, the lives and, and impacting on individuals who are really suffering and having issues. Um, so how do we build technology for them? So the consumer application that you'll see from us is really driven out of us becoming excellent on the diagnostic side. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we simplify whatever we built on the diagnostic side that the physician is using and put it in the hands of the patient and give it to them for ongoing management. And that's the consumer angle for us. It sounds like you've got a lot on your plate and uh, a lot going on. I'm looking forward to checking back with you later in the summer. Tell me, what can't you believe I didn't ask you yet? Um, well, I guess, you know, I always think context is important. So let me contextualize the, 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 that question about, you know, what type of solution would a consumer really see, right? So I, I, you, know, you didn't ask that. So I can provide some color on that. So, you know, you take a patient and they've been diagnosed with um, uh, a cardiovascular issue. And, and now they've got to manage that condition on an ongoing basis, right? If not, it's going to get worse or they're going to have another episode. And so what we do is we take our device, we simplify it, we give it to them, we add an app, we add reminders, we add a whole treatment plan that is based on um, evidence-based uh, treatment for cardiovascular disease. But we package it in a software way. And so the device is really used as a, um, uh, as a biometric check. So it's like a, you know, diabetic user glucometer, they'll put their device on, you know, once in a while and they'll say, Hey, is my baseline improved or not? And if my baseline has improved the software and our cloud will say, okay, great, continue on this path. And here are your reminders of what you should be doing for the next week or two weeks. And then you can check in again and say, Oh, it's been 10 days. My baseline uh, has improved again or it stayed the same. And so then that'll set off another feedback mechanism. Um, and the opposite is true, true as well. So let's say you didn't follow the regimen. Now you put on the device. It says your, your baseline has actually, uh, uh, has to improve, it's gone worse. So now that actually uh, puts a light bulb on that patient's head. It's like, oh, I can actually measure that I'm not doing as well. And why am I not doing as well? Because I didn't follow the treatment plan. And so that provides a very interesting uh, solution for those chronic patients. So I think that, you know, to, to contextualize where you will see biotricity on the consumer side, those are the types of things that we will be building out. So interesting. So will they actually be buying the device and then also paying for subscription or how, do, how will that model work? So we're working with insurance right now. We're talking to organizations like AARP and United uh, Healthcare and, and Blue Cross and, and some of the other insurance uh, carriers. So the idea for us is actually to make it, uh, you know, no cost for the patient because it's in the incentive for everyone in the healthcare system and insurance to actually provide this technology to individuals at no cost or a very negligible cost because it keeps them out of the hospital, keeps them engaged and managing their condition because they've got a feedback mechanism and they have a way to measure whether or not change is happening. Um, now, there are chronic care codes out there that we can leverage. So our business model really is getting insurance to pay for it and providing the technology to the patient at no cost. Thanks a lot for joining us, Wakas. It uh, sounds like you've got some good things going. I'm looking forward to hear how it turns out.
Yeah, well, thank you for having us. And, you know, we appreciate uh, you taking the time. And uh, we're always looking to you know, tell more and more people about what we're doing. And we're certainly excited. And we think that, you know, the next couple of years are uh, uh, a time for transformation. And we hope that Biotricity is a, a leader within that. Yeah, definitely. I think we're on the cusp of some big changes over the next 18 to 24 months. I'm looking forward to it. Exactly. So thank you all for uh, joining us as well. Until next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.